Good morning. Good morning, believers. Oh, good morning. It's your brother, J.D. Nyjah, Word of Truth. With J.D. Nyjah, Coffee. With J.D. Nyjah. Huntington Beach Central Park. Huntington Beach, California. Used to work here. Mowed these lawns. Trimmed these bushes. Picked up trash all through here. Yeah. So, today I opened to, uh, one of the most confusing parts of the Bible for a lot of people. It's just, it's just one little section in Luke. And I'm going to try and explain it. Lord willing, the Spirit is with me because this one has baffled me for a long time. And I may not get it completely right. There's a lot of there's a lot of supernatural um, possibilities going on in these in this little few verses of scripture. And uh, before I get started, all praises, honor, and glory to the heavenly Father, Yahweh. Yahawashai, the great I am, and then the Messiah, the Hamashiach, our Savior, our Deliverer, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christos, Josiah, Yeshua, Yahshua, Yahawashai, same dude, whatever language you speak of him, and then the Ruach. The Holy Spirit or the Rekah HaKwadash in the Paleo Hebrew gives us openings into the vision of what's going on in this book through wisdom and knowledge <coughs> of higher things. Heavenly Father, give us understanding of your scriptures today. Make my words clear on myself and others. Fill us with your love. Fill us with your will. So we can be edified and reconciled back to you through your only begotten son. Amen. All right, so let's get into this. Let's see what I can do with this and the Holy Spirit. Um, so I'm just going to start at Luke 9, uh, verse 22. And this is red ladder. This is the blood speaking. And it says, verse 22 of Luke 9, um, This is Yahushai saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be slain and be raised the third day. So, right there he's saying, You know, my own people, my own, my own niggas are going to um, fuck with me. And when... I heard, heard GMS say not too long ago, there's wicked Edomites. I think it was fucking Apostle Ricard, that loudmouth fucker from Chicago. Yeah, those Edomites put him on the cross. You fucking wicked Edomites, you're going to pay for that. Stupid. It wasn't the Romans that put him on the cross. Ricard, it was your own fucking people. Man, you guys just don't take responsibility for anything, do you? But that's not the point of this video. Um, 
And then in verse 23, it's titled, Follow Me. And it reads, And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. But I tell you of a truth, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of God. <laughs> All right, so a lot to unpack right there. Um, oh, Jesus. Lord, help me. <sighs> um, of course you do. Of course you do. Mm. All right, well, um, this is what we have. We have him saying, take up your cross and follow me. In other words, you're going to have to suffer the same things I suffer. You're going to suffer many things. You're going to suffer being rejected. Um, and this rejection is going to be of your own people. And of your own. We went into that yesterday, how we're going to be, um, we're going to be shit on by our own people, by our own families, by people close to us are going to um, turn on us and all that. So that's what he means. Not only the priests and chief elders and, and scribes, but um, people close to you and your family. Um, if any man come by me, let him deny himself, take up the cross. So, um, you, So I'm getting messages from the ex. I told her I'll call her later. And then I'm grouchy. And I am. I'm fucking grouchy this morning. She woke me up. And um, I usually don't get woken up by anything. And I was having a nice dream. You know how in the morning when you... um. Sometimes you'll wake up and you go back to sleep. And when you go back to sleep, you, you instantly drop into this um, REM sleep, this deep sleep that you really need. And that's where I was. And then she woke me up. And so I'm, I feel like I'm going to be off all friggin' day now. And now she's, she's bugging in the middle of this message. That's not that easy. This is, this, I'm trying to wait for the spirit, and here she is doing her devil shit, leaving me a bunch of text messages right in the middle of my message. So anyway, that that's, that's that, and then I have these people pull up right next to me and start chit-chatting and just keep moving, keep it moving, <laughs> keep it moving, that away. Beat it. <laughs> All right. So back to what I was saying. For a man, what man, what is an advantage to a man if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? Um, I just wanted to go into this cast away verbiage for a minute. What does that mean? We see it in... Revelation where the angels are supposedly cast 
away. They were cast down. What does that what does that word cast actually mean? It means sent sent away. So when you look this is where I was trying to explain about the angels when they were cast down we weren't we weren't kicked out of heaven we were sent from heaven we were sent down not thrown down not kicked out we were sent and that's what the same verbiage same word he's saying right here lose himself or be cast away be sent away sent out of the kingdom so um there's different interpretations of the uh, passages that are coming up. And the Holy Spirit's telling me one thing. And the Bible commentaries are telling me a similar but a little bit different thing. And um, I'll read it and then we'll talk about it. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and my words, verse 26 of Luke 9. Whosoever shall be ashamed of me and my works, he... Ah, <sighs> for who, whomsoever shall be ashamed of me and my works, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed, when he shall come in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. But I tell you of a truth, there be some standing here, which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of God. <clears throat> so, what the heck does that mean? He's... What is he saying? Um, we could look at it as simply as possible and say they're going to be transfigured. Um, they're not going to see, taste death until they see where they're not going. Is that what that means? You're going to, you're not going to, truly die because we know that we don't die because we're judgment we go up and we're judged and we come down so we never our spirit never really dies and what I think Jesus is trying to say right there is that um the, the only ones that are really going to die, the only ones that are going to be put to death are the ones that are ashamed um, and didn't pick up their cross and didn't, didn't listen to the words of Jesus and didn't listen to the words of the Most High that were written in this book. They didn't understand the words that were being spoken, they didn't get it. Because right after this is the transfiguration. So when we think of the transfiguration for ourselves, like Enoch was transfigured and um, Elijah was transfigured, they, they went up without dying, right? The Lord took their body and spirit, the whole thing, boom, gone. And when Elisha saw that, he asked for a double portion. And Elijah said, well, if you see me go up, you'll get that. And so Elijah got that double portion. And that's how, that's how he became um, both John. A lot of people don't believe this, but this is my belief. That that double portion made, um, made it possible for him to be both John the Revelator and John the Baptist. He was both Johns. <clears throat> he was Johnny Johnny because he got that double portion, so he became a a dual a dualized spirit. And I uh, you can you can study on that yourself. Um I'm not going to go into all the reasons why I believe that it's, there's quite a few different parts of the Bible that would 
allude to that being true, but a lot of people don't don't want to think that way. They don't want to know that. But anyway, I'm going to keep going. So the next verse is talks about the transfiguration. This kind of kind of plays into it. Um, and it came to pass about eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistening. And this is where another place where GMS gets, gets themselves all twisted in this Negro centric religion that they believe. this black Hebrew Israelism um, in Revelation 1 where it talks about the the bronze feet and the white hair and the the glit the, the shiny robe or whatever it is um, this is a this is another example of that same thing where it has nothing to do with the color of his skin. What we're talking about here is his um, light body, his his spirit body, right? His countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistening. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory, who appeared in glory. So they they looked the same as um, the same figure of Jesus in Revelation 1, and they probably appeared exactly like um, Yehoshai appeared in this verse, gl white and glistening. They had the light body, right? And spoke of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. So they're talking to Moses and Elijah were talking to Jesus about, you know, yeah, we know this is what you're going to do, right? And he, he, he had witnessed by Peter, John, and James were there to witness that. So this was a witnessing of what it's going to be like to be transfigured because he seen, they, they seen it, right? They seen it happening before their very eyes. Let me go on. Um, but Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep, and when they were awake, they saw his glory in the two men that stood with him. So they came out of a fog, right? They came out of a sleep. They came out of their um, worldly uh, nap time, and their eyes were opened to the heavenly realm. I hear people talking. It's fucking bugging me. But anyhow, um, back to what I was saying. So they seen it. They woke up and they seen this happening. Verse 33, and it came to pass as they departed from him. Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here and let us make three tabernacles. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. So he's like, whoa, th this is awesome. We just witnessed something really cool. Can we build houses for you so that we can... Um, <laughs> he's probably thinking he wants to be able to contain that um, that light. He's like, if, maybe if I build houses, they'll come back and, and dwell in them and I'll be able to see that again, right? So they're talk, they're, they're kind of talking about the same thing where Yehoshai said, and some of you won't see death until you see the kingdom. So they actually saw the kingdom right there. They were standing in on in transfigured light body spiritually opened eyes realm. They were they were they were witnessing the kingdom before their very eyes. And then it goes on to say while he thus spoke, there came a cloud and overshadowed them, and they feared as they entered into the cloud. So, here comes the chariot. And the chariot was probably going to um, 
start over and wanted the Lord, Heavenly Father, probably wanted to fucking destroy Peter and James and John and start over again and have it, um, have someone else witness that wasn't stupid because it probably pissed the Heavenly Father off he, because right after that he says, and there came a voice out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son, hear him. So what this, what these verses are telling me is um, there's going to be a lot to, to deal with when we're suffering these tribulations, when we're carrying our cross, when we are following him to the kingdom. We're trying to get to the kingdom, right? And we're following him and we're taking all this nonsense from this fucked up 3D world and we're trying to get our light bodies and we're trying to be transfigured we have to submit completely and what a, maybe that's why it is so hard to understand because what it really comes down to is what are we pushing here what are we pushing are we pushing the edomites are got to die are we pushing that only me and my buddies are going to make it um, I'm going to be the king and ruler and I'm going to be the priest and, and everyone else is going to have to fucking bow down to me and bl whatever this nonsense people say, oh, as long as you love God, you'll have all the riches in this world has to offer. I mean, you could go on and on with, um, false doctrine and nonsense that comes out of, um, the wicked interpretations of these, of this Bible. But can you actually, can you actually hear him? And that's what he's, that's what, that's what the Heavenly Father um, was trying to uh, get these wicked, <laughs> even, even his own disciples were, were just, they were just men, you know, they're just. They're just men trying to figure it out and um, do the right thing. But what is the right thing? And I think what this, these verses are saying is, um, even though you're following me, like Jesus said, um, there's some of you standing here that will not see death until you see the kingdom. Um that that I don't think that's a, a good thing that he's saying yeah I don't think he's saying um, <laughs> you're not gonna die you're not gonna die until you get to the you're ne you won't even taste death and then you'll be in the kingdom no he's saying you're not gonna taste death until you realize that even though you followed me the best you could <laughs> and you thought, and you thought you knew what I was about. There's going to come a time when you look, you you look around and say, and that's what this whole thing with Peter, James, and John right after that is saying is saying, you could see, you'll see exactly what the kingdom's about. You'll see the light body. You'll see um, what it means to be transfigured, and you're still going to say, let's build a tabernacle, like Peter said, um, totally going off, totally wrong, totally, um, totally in his own mind, thinking about what, what a man should do for a God, build him a house, you know, let's build him a, a safe place, let's, there is no safe place until you get home, and I think that's what the, these verses are saying, um, just know that there's no place to lay your head. Um, there's no place where the evil isn't going to attack you. You're not going anywhere until you until you finally get there. 
And it, either you get there and you transfigure and you live forever or you're going to be outside of that kingdom. You're going to be outside that realm. And you're going to be seeing the kingdom from afar because you didn't listen. You didn't hear what you didn't let your spirit hear. You didn't let yourself be awakened like it says. But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. And when they were awake, let's see what it says about were awake. Um, 32, were fully awake. When they fully opened their eyes to what they could see, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. So, let me see how much time I got. That's about it. That's going to be, I think that's going to be it for this lesson. I just, um, I opened to that and the Lord wanted me to talk about that because I think as, as these days get hotter and shorter and faster and more ridiculous, the pressure is going to be, going to be turned up and it's going to be easy to get angry. It's going to be easy to to want to stay in this world. Um, you're going to want to eat when you're hungry. You're going to want to drink when you're thirsty. You're going to want to sleep when you can't. You're going to want to be awake when you're sleepy. You're going to, you know what I'm saying? You're the, it, the devil's going to come against your body in every imaginable way. Um, he's going to make your bowels let loose at the worst times. He's going to, uh, make your bowels lock up at the worst times. Um, your, your senses are going to fail you and it's going, it's probably going to be the most intense spiritual F you that you've ever could imagine. And so for us to hear him, to hear what Yahushai is saying is it's going to come and you have to just let it be. Um, and we think back on the Beatles. I've been listening to a station called Sage Aquay about the um, demonic um, <clears throat> world that Beatles inhabited and what they were designed to do for the devil. And you think of that song, let it be, that was at the end of their, that was at the very end of their, um, little run. Let it be was the, the coup de grace. Um, mother Mary comes to me whispering words of wisdom. Let it be. That was, that was a twisted way that, a lot of people say, I'm not going to let it be. I, I'm not going to let it be. You know, when the when those times come, when they, ah, uh, the Beatles said, let it be. I'm not going with them. They're demonic. That was a twist of fate where they're saying, um, you, you're going to have to let it be. But a lot of people are going to be twisted by um, knowing that the, the Beatles had a, demonic edge and this is where this this songstress this this lucifer this man of the music this man of the the vibration the prince of the air um is putting these strange thoughts into your head and are going to try and confuse you in those last days that's all right let it be let it be. Word of Truth with J.D. Nyjah. Hope this message was edifying. I pray you're all well today. Probably going to do another message here in a minute. Um, Till the next one. Shalom.